Today's verse is from Surah Ibrahim, which is chapter 14 of the Quran. And we're going to actually be looking at two verses because they're connected, which is verse 24 and 25. So Allah says, Bismillah rahman rahim Have you not considered how Allah sets forth a parable of a good word, being like a good tree, whose root is firm and whose branches are in heaven, yielding its fruit in every season by the permission of its Lord? And Allah sets forth parables for men that they may be mindful. So um, the, the term used uh, in the Quran is kalimat at a good word. And tayyab is good, pure, uh, sincere. It has many meanings. And uh, in the first instance, uh, kalimat at is a word that goes righteousness to the truth. But it is so much more than that. So the Quran is comparing a good word good tree and later on uh, in the same uh, surah uh, and to an evil tree so it's interesting you know we consider tree a solid physical mass and we really consider our world to be the same way you know we think that they are spoken into the air and they kind of disappear at this moment and uh, sometimes we wish that they that, um, regret what we say so on the other hand you know all of us have experienced uh, the power of a word to stay with us uh, after it is said. And, you know, there's a very interesting research uh, done by uh, Professor Imato, I believe his name is, who, um, you know, did some research on the fact that we are all made up of water, 90% water. And when uh, spoken to water, it actually changes the composition, you know, it changes the crystal, it changes the quality of the water. And he said, uh, you know, his, his his theory is based on the fact we get very impacted by words because uh, the molecules of water in our bodies to the words that are spoken. And uh, so this is uh, just a, you know, interesting kind of, and you can look up his, um, his work uh, on, I'm sure, YouTube, Google, it's all over the place. So... You know, the, the power of words is that it can connect people, it can heal people, right? And they also have the power to alienate people. Uh, we know that words produce powerful and lasting effects, both on the speaker, you know, when we are upset or angry or in love or overtaken by strong emotion, and the listener itself. And whether we are aware of it or not, every word we say has the potential to either ease or afflict ourselves and others. And the Quran here is asking us to be mindful of this power and to use it wisely. So let's explore a little bit about uh, you know, this parable of the verse which compares a good word to a good tree. So if you look at a tree, like a beautiful tree, you know, one with like in my head, you know, a beautiful tree is one that has a large canopy, that has lots of shade, that has beautiful to look at, and it's stable, it's stable and yet flexible, right? So it, is, it remains firm and unshaken in storms because its roots are firmly fixed in the earth. You know, it is something that we can count on. Uh, it has a wide canopy branches reach high and they catch sunshine and at the same time they provide shade to birds and other wildlife and to men and animals beneath it as well. It has abundant fruit providing pleasure, nourishment, uh, well-being to those who eat it. And if we look at the tree uh, and connect with it, the miracle of the tree, it can really um, foster, facilitate feelings of awe. In, inside us and all oh, it turns out uh, you know much research is being done on this um, newly discovered emotion in the west but uh, you know we we see it as being awed with god's creation and it turns out that a feeling of awe that uh, you know when we connect to nature when we connect to something bigger than ourselves 
the vastness of the universe and it's the relative insignificance of uh, of uh, our being it actually is a huge boost in well-being emotional and mental um, you know well-being so um, you know awe is kind of uh, really one of the one of the emotions to facilitate and foster and certainly uh, you know meditating on a tree or reflecting on the miracle that is the tree can do that mm -hmm. so similarly you know let's see how a good word is like a good tree and um, you know the more we reflect on on verses like this uh, it, you know just think of it as like a meditation for the week kind of thing um, you know our it it always reveals more than we you know so many times i go back to this verse and each time i discover a little another little nuance in it so similarly a good word is one that is a pleasure to listen to it's easy on the senses it is a uh, firmly rooted in truth unshaken and uh, you know a uh, uh, the root of of communication of a good word is the niya right it's the intention with which we do it and that is what gives the word its stability its structure and um, the impact of a good word is to provide guidance to provide comfort to soothe another human being to give hope support and uh, the fruits of a good word are, of course increase connection with others the decimation of knowledge guidance uh, support exchange of ideas uh, a good word has many many benefits um, you know we know that one of the greatest pleasures of um, of connection to other human beings is to have a really good conversation where we feel understood and we have uh, exchanged uh, ideas uh, our mind has been expanded so uh, a good word has the capacity to do all of that again good word like a good tree can also inspire oh you know uh, when we uh, when we come across an idea when we find a new connection to the divine all of these uh, have the capacity to give us momentary glimpses into uh, into the nature of divinity and that can certainly facilitate the feeling of oh so um can you think of other ways that uh, you know words that we speak are like that of a tree and i challenge you right that the more you think about it the next time you look at a tree perhaps uh, just uh, you know wonder you know be curious at what the what the quran is trying to point towards and how uh, you know how in many ways uh, a word is like a tree so uh, just to deepen our understanding a little bit more uh, let's explore a narration from imam ali the salam where he says speech is implanted in the heart and deposited into the thought structured by the intellect conveyed through the tongue its body is the letters its soul is the meaning its adornment is punctuation and its order is reason of course this profound saying has so many layers to it and we cannot we cannot possibly do justice to it in this uh, brief reflection but just let's reflect on the process of communication you know what comes out of our mouths is not the beginning of communication sometimes we think that um it starts with an idea with a thought in our head but in islam remember the seat of understanding is the heart and not the head, not the mind so the thought the idea that we express is kind of seeded in our hearts it is watered by our thoughts because you know we get we have a feeling in our heart and then we can either um reinforce it by by under by additional thoughts or uh, choose to just let it pass by and then it is expressed by our tongues so the root of the tree of our communication lies in the heart and a pure intention provides a very good strong root for this system of the tree of communication so uh, what this means is that if we are having trouble managing our tongues which i know i do often we need to go back to the root of our ideas our thoughts what is in our heart and we need to start with a pure intention so if the roots of our communication are healthy that is if we intend if we have virtuous uh, intentions right if we intend to connect 
to build relationships, to share our inner world, our thoughts, our ideas, our feelings even, uh, what is true for us, if we intend to inform, to advise, to guide, to support, uh, to praise, appreciate, show gratitude. All of these are really good intentions, strong intentions for, for, the, for the tree of communication. And then if our intention is such, then it will be easy to learn the skills of communication. Those are not challenging. And the fruits of our tree with strong roots will be nourishing and delicious and um, a benefit to those who, who encounter us. If, on the other hand, uh, our intention is to mislead, to deceive, to gossip, to be judgmental, uh, to show that we are better, you know, when the ego gets the better of us, uh, to sow dissension, you know, sometimes um, our words tend to add fuel to the fire. Uh, or to fix uh, others without looking at ourselves, which is so much easier, isn't it? Um, or to show off, you know, to, uh, to show others how we are better, how we have it all together, or on any number of other unworthy intentions, right? Then just learning the skills of communication will not bring us the connection, the intimacy, or the happiness we seek. The fruits of our connection, of our communication will not be worthy. Um, because again, it starts with the intention. So, um, you know, very often when, when couples uh, come to learn communication skills, I will always remind them that learning the skills is really not that challenging. What is more challenging is to apply them when you are not feeling at your best, to, um, to have that intention, to, to keep that intention pure, and to look at yourself rather than the other person, because it's so easy to recognize all of this in somebody else and really challenging to do it for ourselves. So before we open our mouths, Let's pause for a moment and check in with our intention. What am I hoping to achieve through this communication? What is my objective? Is my intention worthy? And if those things check out, then go ahead and open your mouth. Otherwise, let's you know practice silence. Let's practice uh, you know, changing our intention for the better because uh, there's a beautiful dua which says, mm -hmm. The one who is uh, not worthy, who is kind of yucky, has come to you uh, and uh, change what is evil in me with what is beautiful in you, O Kareem. You know, oh, your, oh, my benevolent, most generous Lord. So let's uh, pray that uh, we keep that intention, um, you know, the, the pure intention of communication, of connection, of providing validation, support, so that we can have uh, this, the, the, the words that heal. And uh, inshallah. So thank you for listening. And salam alaikum.